everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. We also create modular systems and scenes that you can use without any setup. Today, I wanted to do a quick tutorial on another interactive element that I've been working on for our next release that's coming out tomorrow, June 4th, and that is this wall of light that will open when someone has the correct key item in their inventory and are near the wall, and the wall will then close once they step away from it. This is smart enough that if you have multiple characters with the keys, it won't close again until all tokens that have the key have moved away from the wall. So it's a very robust and powerful system that can add some really cool exploration to your next dungeon crawl, where your players have to decide who's holding the key and potentially put themselves in danger if they have to hold the door open for the rest of the group to get through while they're being chased by a monster or other adversary. So let's dive right in with this tutorial for Foundry VTT using Monk's Active Tile Triggers and Tagger. I've got the tile configuration open here with the triggers for Monk's Active Tiles. You can copy this down at your leisure. The actions themselves are fairly straightforward, so we're mostly going to be discussing the logic here, as there are a few pitfalls that you could find yourself in if you don't follow this logic. First, you'll notice that I'm using Tagger to have some unique tags on this particular prefab tile. And this is going to allow us to use Wildcard to have multiple walls of light within one scene. And this is also how we're going to be checking to see whether the wall is open or closed. Otherwise, we can have some unwanted behaviors like sound effects playing when we don't really need to. And this tile is configured using on enter and exit. And you'll notice that we have anchors here that are underscore enter. And these are a new feature added recently to Monk's Active Tile Triggers. These are smart anchors that are automatically going to redirect to the appropriate anchor based on this trigger method. So this is replacing the old redirect based on trigger method macro, and we can use these direct anchors right here. So we have underscore enter and underscore exit. So we can see that there is a block of code for handling entry and a block of code for handling exit. And so we're gonna take a look at the enter section. And the first thing we're gonna do in both of these blocks is checking for tokens that have the correct item here. You notice this is filtered by items in inventory and we're selecting our current tokens. And then it's really important to note that this is by item name. It doesn't matter what type of item this is. It can be a loot item, it can be a sword, it can be a suit of armor, anything. It also doesn't matter what system this is from because almost every system uses names for their items. So this will work across a wide variety of systems making it a really robust and easily modifiable feature. If you don't wanna use a glowing crystal, you can rename it to whatever you want. Then we're going to continue if we actually have a token that has the item. Otherwise, the wall's just not going to change. And then we're also going to check to see if the wall has the closed tag. This is searching the entire scene for this particular tag. And so that's why it's important to use the wildcard feature in order to make sure it's this specific wall. Otherwise, we could have kind of false flags going on if there's another wall that has been set to closed. But having the closed feature there is really important because otherwise, we might have something where the opening sound plays again when the door is already open and someone approaches. Then we're playing sound files and we're waiting just a couple of seconds and then altering our walls, lights, and sounds to reflect our open state. And these are all gonna be as customizable as you want. So go ahead and set that up however you prefer. I do wanna draw your attention to something that I learned recently thanks to Crowguard's great wiki. And that is that I'm using tagger here to alter all of these walls. And we can see that by a tagger, I can actually edit all four of these walls using one action because they're all tagged with the same tag. If you weren't using tagger, you'd have to pick all of these individually. And then really valuably, uh, like I said, from Crowguard's wiki, there are three attributes I wanna alter here. And you can actually alter all of these attributes in a single alter action by just separating them with semicolons. You do need to make sure that you have the values also separate out with semicolons. Even though we're setting all of them to zero, they need to have their own individual setup. So after that, we're finishing the rest of our open state uh, actions. 
And finally, we're going to apply tags to the tile here. And I have a 0.1 second delay here between removing the old closed tag and adding the new open tag. The reason for that is that sometimes if you have these things that are altering the exact same field, in this case, the tags right back to back, sometimes they can get a little tripped up on the order of operations here. And sometimes you can get a result where one of those actions will take place, but not both. So adding this little delay in there helps us make sure that both the proper tag is getting removed and the new tag is getting applied properly. So that's why that extra delay is in there. There's probably a more condensed way you could order this in your logic, but just to make you aware of that. Finally, then we're gonna stop the remaining actions so that we're not gonna go into the exit uh, code yet. Now, under the exit code, we have a check to see if the door or the wall of light is already open, because obviously if it's not open, then we don't need to repeat the closing effects here. So that's why we check for that first. Then we are going to do something interesting. We're going to be finding tokens within the triggering tile area. And before we do that, we're adding in this 0.3 second wait period, because otherwise, if you don't have a delay period, the token that's leaving is technically still going to be partially in the tile at the time this check runs. So that's why it's important that we add a slight delay. And again, we're using tokens within the triggering tile because we're wanting to see if there is another token there that has the crystal. And that is how we are filtering for the items in inventory. Rather than using our current tokens, we're using the tokens within the tile and we're making sure that our triggering token here is already completely out of the tile. Then if we have an additional current token, so that would be a token that still has the key, right, next to the wall, they are going to then continue the code and we're going to just stop the rest of the actions because we don't need to close the door yet. Otherwise, we're gonna hop down to our third and final anchor, which is the no keys. And that's where we're actually going to do our closing of everything. We're going to be changing all of the walls back into place. We're playing our sound file to indicate the change happening. Basically, any of our actions that are resetting the wall of light to that closed position are occurring down here in this no keys section. And once again, we have that brief delay between removing the old tag and adding the new tag to make sure that we're actually getting both of those actions taken care of. That kind of does it for the final walkthrough on the logic here. So this is a great spot, once again, to pause and make a note of the tile configuration so that you can replicate this at your leisure. And that's going to conclude this tutorial on creating a key locked wall of light here in Foundry VTT using Monk's active tile triggers and Tagger. This is a really interesting interactive element that you can include in your next dungeon romp or exploration based adventure. It's very interesting and striking to players to have a specific item in their inventory really matter when it comes to getting around. And like I said, you can add tension with this in a myriad of ways including having the key holder hold the door open for the rest of the group as they run through, but potentially put themselves at risk to the monster that's chasing the group. So in the comments down below, let me know what your party is going to be running from when they're trying to get through this wall of light. Once again, this has been Zephyr with the BaileyWiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you'll also get access to all of those modular systems and scenes that we've ever made, including our new release that's coming out tomorrow, June 4th, with a library of interactive effects and objects like this wall of light. Thanks so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.